With this brickwork, with these piers, they reclaim bricks from when we, when the lads demolished the other canal wall and dressed the bricks and used them to rebuild the wall on the other side. But in the meantime, they wanted me to build some piers just, just for um, heritage purpose and to look part of the job and be a bit of a safety um, wall as well. And all the bricks are different sizes and they're all shapes. So when I built the first pier, to get the second pier level, I knocked some nails into the uh, joints to level off because all the bricks you use are all different sizes. So now I'm going to build this brick on coping brick and as you can see they need um, a drip just like a window sill or a garden wall that has got a, a drip. But these piers have to be this size to um, so they're stable. If you had a one brick pier it could be pushed over so it's got to be a brick and a half square pier. And then again, this is my own idea, with the materials we've got, there's a donation of um, coping blue bricks and a donation of these block pavers. So I thought, oh, I'll stick the coping brick on there. So as you can see, it's the same all the way along. And also, it had the different heights, because the steps coming down. I'll lay these now. You see, I've got to have it like a lip drip for the uh, rainwater to run off. So I've had to adjust the joints to make them tight so that the brick fits, the five bricks fit onto this pier. So as you can see, I've got a nice little, so if the, when the water hits that, it'll just run down. Unfortunately, I can't do it on the other side because it's not practical. And these bricks are all reclaimed. 1794, the canal was built. So that, that's how old they are. And some of them are different colors, different shapes. It's like building a heritage wall, you know, say in a pub, You've got like the plaster on the wall and they make it rough so it looks heritage. Yeah. And it's the same with the brickwork when you go into pubs. You can see some of the brickwork is all over the place. These different bricks, you have to sort of work from bump to bump to make it look anywhere near. <laughs> it was a challenge because you can't really build it, something bang on square and upright with reclaim all shapes sizes of bricks the pointing is like cut and struck so you point it like that and then you strike it like that to get all the, the pieces off to make it look somewhere near if you had bucket handle or, or a curved joint it wouldn't look as good but it, see like that it finishes it off if I did if I didn't put these on it it wouldn't look right there'd just be a blank wall there so how do you finish it off you can't put another cope in there so when you look at it all it all matches and uh, what papers somebody gave us, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, all donated. I didn't even know they were here until somebody said, what, there's some black papers over there. And I thought, yeah, great. Okay. 
That's it, so it's just a matter of pointing these up. And then when you point them up, a very thin joints to get the uh, the five bricks within the the dimension of the pier. Yeah. Up there, if you come up there, you'll see the the two tubes that are in coloured blue. And Peter Buck's idea was that was the height of the water, more or less. That's where the lock came to. But if you go up up here. That, that, that was where the lock was, you know, that recess there. It's, the water came to here, you know, the actual height to the back of the lock. Yeah. You see the metal part there? Yeah, so that's the height that it was. Yeah, just be, below. And, um... I had to start the pier here and then follow the stonework with the curved wall to there and then continue with the piers. So that designated where the water. We can get by the buffer rail. Mm. Underneath that, that's the that was was the height of the water. It was a wider pier here, look, so I had to put a, another block paver there. That's how it started off. Just for access to the house here? No, this is going nowhere. This, this is the dead end. And then of course I've got to excavate to the same level as the lower lock level, yeah. which is quite substantial. Yeah. It's just a feature, this is. Like the arches, you know, a feature yeah. for the canal. Yes, I was just pointing up and uh, job done. Isn't it marvellous that in 2012 we finished the weir? <laughs> 2022, finished this? Ten years. <laughs> Roger, how are you doing? All right, mate. Just keep on. Yeah. Just keep on. Nice. Now it's sunny. It's a, oh, it's warming up a bit. Wind. It's been so cold. Good morning Paul, it's good to see you here again on the Lock 24 site. As you see we've got this, uh, this old canal wall that uh, we basically stripped down. A lot of it was not uh, fixing mortar at all, so we're stripping all of the uh, bricks out and rebedding them and so that uh, hopefully the, the wall will last another 200 years and uh, it's not actually taking the weight that it had originally because the, the water has gone away from it, or will have gone away from it, quite some distance. But we are aware that uh, we've got to maintain stability of our, our neighbouring ground. 
hence we, we're putting in a uh, sort of 14, 15 inch wall uh, to uh, retain all of that ground alongside this uh, fence. And we've also got to make it animal proof. Apparently at the weekend we had a little Jack Russell from the cottage here decided to come and investigate on the canal uh, site here. So we've got to uh, make it sure that it's uh, animal proof. It's amazing how high up this is now. Oh, it is, yeah. yeah. You can see the uh, rubbing strip on the edge there. Yes. What are you doing, Dave? Right, we've been stripping this wall out all the way through. We've had to, you see one or two places here where he pushes forward, right there. We have to strip them courses out, and to get to it, of course, we have to take the top off. So once we've got the top off and we get the courses back in place, this one particularly needs repointing. From the end of that conifer tree all the way through, we've repointed it. When we get to it, we've just got this section here to do now. And then we're coming along with the brickwork. And once we get the tops on, like down by that fence there, we can point them up and say it's finished. And there's, this lot's got to sit on top of the coping stones. This lot belongs to that cottage. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is, Paul, but <laughs> that's the job. So oh, okay. I'm pointing, Brian's bricklaying. Billy was down here yesterday doing some pointing as well. So when we get to here and we finish this, this lot's got to be stripped out. And we have to replace, so you've got a classic e look, you've got coping stones here that have broke. So as you take them out, we'll have to replace them with another coping stone. <laughs> and we're going to have to, because they go underneath the wall, hopefully, we're going, to be, we're going to be able to, I think this one's a bit loose, Paul. We're going to be able to take them out like that, to fetch them out underneath the wall, and then once you put the brickwork back, got to set the coping stone back in. Hi, Stuart. You all right, mate? Mm -hmm. I want a job like uh, Stuart walking about and looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the paintings he's done around there, Paul? Oh, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Those people are looking at the painting now, look. Yeah. And when you look down there, you can see what's happening, can't you? Mm -hmm. That's. That's the uh, the original towpath. Yeah, we've got, that's a new towpath coming through. That's got to go all the way up to the foot, up to Cricket Lane, and then we've got to go under Cricket Lane. So all this where we stand has got to come out, so we can wow. construct a bridge, go on, go under Cricket Lane, and then they've got to construct a lock the other side of Cricket Lane. Well, now that lock we took out there is going up there. 